In this video, we are going to do outlier detection and removal. Outliers are the data points which are data errors, or sometimes they're not data errors, but they just um, represent the extreme variation in your data set. So the, although they are valid, it makes sense to remove them. Otherwise, they can create some issues later on. We can apply now different techniques to detect the outliers and remove them. And these techniques are, you either use like standard deviation, for example, or you can use a simple uh, domain knowledge. One of the things in real estate domain is that uh, when you have, let's say two bedroom apartment, it cannot be uh, 500 square foot in total area, right? Usually see, look at all these guys, right? Like here is, 1056 square foot but it is 2 bhk so if you just divide this by 2 bhk you get like 500 for example okay here also 2600 you divide by 4 and you get around 600 to 700 uh, so we want to first look at uh, any data rows where the square foot per bedroom is less than some threshold okay so as a data scientist now you go to your business manager who is a real estate expert and you ask him this question what is a typical uh, square foot per bedroom okay and he will tell you that it is around 300 so if you have any case for example you have uh, let's say let's say you have 600 square foot home and the total number of bedrooms are six, then it means it's 100. This, this seems very unusual. He, he tells you that uh, 300 uh, square foot per bedroom is a typical uh, threshold. So using that criteria, now you will examine your data set and try to find out the properties where this threshold is not met. And the way you do that is, you will divide your total square foot by BHK and you will see, okay, if it is less than 300, show me the value. So you will uh, print this uh, data frame, these data points, and you'll go to your business manager and show it to him. He will look at this and he will say, hmm, thousand square foot home and six bedroom hall kitchen, that is unusual, okay? So he'll ask you to remove that. Similarly, you have 600 square foot home, but the total number of beds are eight, right? So these are like clearly data errors or anomalies or outliers, whatever you want to call it, and you can safely remove them, okay? So we are going to remove all these data points. So first, let's see how many rows we have in our data frame. So we have around 13,000 and now, I'm going to remove this. So the way you remove it is, you create a new data frame, call it DF6. And here I want to negate uh, this, okay? So if you want to filter uh, all these rows, you do negate on your criteria. And then DF6.shape, when you run it, you see you removed some outliers. Now your number of rows are 500502, okay? So this is one of the ways of removing outliers. Now we can have even more outliers. For example, uh, let's check price per square foot, okay? So I'm going to check price per square foot. I want to look at all the properties where price per square foot is either very, very high or very, very low. And first I will do is, you can say df6 dot price per square foot dot describe. Describe method gives you some basic statistics on that particular column. When you run it, you find that the minimum value is 267 rupees per square foot. Although in Bangalore to get a property with 267 rupees per square foot is very, very low, you know, it's very unlikely. And similarly, you have this property where the, 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 the price per square foot is extremely high. Now, this is possible if the property is in a very prime area, but as we're going to build a generic model, it makes sense to remove this kind of extreme cases, okay? So we are going to write a function 
that can remove these uh, extreme cases based on a uh, standard deviation now if you know about mean and standard deviation uh, the if your data set has a normal distribution which we are assuming that our data set should have a normal distribution then um, most of the data points around i think 68 percent data points should lie between mean and one standard deviation okay so we are going to filter out anything which is beyond uh, one standard deviation okay now if you don't know the statistical theory about uh, standard deviation then you can pause the video and just follow some basic tutorials on what standard deviation is etc it's a pretty simple concept okay so i will write now a function which can remove price per square foot outliers per location now you have to do this per location because some locations will have high price some location will have less price so what you want to do is per location you want to find mean and standard deviation and then filter out any data points which are beyond one standard deviation okay and that function will look something like this here what i'm doing is i'm taking data frame as an input and i'm grouping them by location first and per location i get this sub data frame for which i am calculating mean m is mean and st is standard deviation and then i am filtering all those data points which are beyond this standard deviation which means anything above mean minus one standard deviation and anything below mean plus ten, one standard deviation i will keep it in my reduced data frame and then i will keep on appending those data frames per location and this will give me the output data frame okay so let's call this function on my df7 df6 so when i call it on df6 i get df7 as an output and when i run it uh, what we did is we removed price per square foot outlier from df6 and now we have a new data frame df7 which has 10000 data points okay the previous one had 12000 502 so we removed close to 2000 outliers from our data set now one more thing we want to check in our data set is whether the property prices for three bedroom apartments are more than the property price of two bedroom apartment or not for the same square foot area for example here we are looking at two properties same square foot around like 1200 square foot but you see that the three three bedroom price is 81 lakh whereas the two bedroom price is 1 crore 27 lakh so although the square feet is same the less number of bedrooms you have the property price is higher now this could be due to many reasons we don't know right it could be because of the the property is in uh, some location where there are special amenities or anything else right we don't know what the reason is but this is the behavior we see in our data set and we want to do some visualization of how many such cases we have okay for which i'm going to write a function which will use a scatter plot to give me this visualization okay and that function i have already created i'm just going to copy paste here so just let me walk you through this function what this function is doing is it is drawing a scatter plot on which it will plot two bedroom and three bedroom uh, apartment okay let, let me just run this function okay and then we'll go over this function so this function takes a location and a data frame as an input so i have df7 and i'm going to run this function for rajaji nagar location and when i do that what i find is this scatter plot so here blue points are two bedroom apartments and green markers are three bedroom hall kitchen properties x axis has total square foot area and the y axis has price per square feet okay i can have price per square foot or maybe price let me do price
when I plot this, what I find is I have in a same, so if you look at a vertical line for same square foot area, for example, look at this particular line, right? Around 1700 square foot area, the two bedroom apartment prices are higher than three bedroom. See, I have these four data points where uh, these are like two bedroom apartments whose values are higher than three bedrooms, okay? Here also you see some cases. So I want to remove some of these outliers, okay? And, okay, let, let's go over this function. So this function creates two different data frames where for same location you will uh, have data points for two bedroom and three bedroom apartments. And then we'll plot a scatter plot using these two lines, okay? Uh, and that's it. All right, now you can run the same function for a different location. Okay, I'm going to run it in Hebel location as well. And there also I find many cases. See here, like all these blue data points have higher value than green. So which means two bedroom price is higher than three. Okay, so I want to do some data cleanup uh, in this area for which I have again written a function uh, for removing the outliers. So this function, what it will do is it will uh, create uh, per bedroom homes, it will create some statistics, okay? So the kind of statistics it will create is, um, I will create a dictionary like this where this is one bedroom apartment homes, okay? for which I will calculate a mean standard deviation and count. And then what I will do is I will filter out all the two bedroom apartments whose mean value, like whose value, not mean value, whose value is less than, let's say mean. Cause you would think that your two bedroom apartment home for the same square foot area should have a little higher value than one bedroom, okay? So essentially that's what I'm trying to do in this particular function. So here, first I'm doing location group by going through every location data frame. And for every location data frame, I'm again creating uh, new data frames based on BHK. And per BHK data frame, I'm computing mean standard deviation and count. Okay, and once that for loop is over, I'm running the same for loop again and try, trying to exclude those data points which lies uh, beyond uh, which, whose value uh, of price per square foot is less than the mean of uh, the previous BHK. For example, for two bedroom apartment, I will try to filter all those property values whose price per square foot is less than the mean of uh, this one a uh, bedroom mean okay so we can do this and we can create df8 where i will call this remove function and then say df8 dot shape so when i run it it's gonna take some time but see it removed so many data points and now i have 7,329 left. After this is done, I can again plot the same scatter plot to see what kind of improvement it has done. And when I do that, uh, I will have to supply DF8 here. When I do that, you will notice that, see all these green data points that I had in this area, those data points are gone now. So majority of the data points for three bedroom apartment, and this is green is three, has higher value than two. I mean, I still have some data points here, green. It is very kind of difficult to exactly remove those data points. So this kind of uh, abnormalities are going to be present and it is, I think it is fine to have such abnormalities. Once these uh, outliers are removed, now I want to plot a histogram 
and I want to see how many apartments or how many properties I have in uh, per, per square foot area, okay? So when I run this code, what I find is majority of the property. So here on the X axis, I have price per square foot. The Y axis is a histogram. So it shows number of data points in that category. So like, from zero to 10,000 rupees per square foot range, I have majority of my data points. You can see this is normal distribution, kind of like a Gaussian curve, right? So it's like a bell curve here. And I see that my data set has a normal distribution. It looks, it looks good at this point. Now let's explore uh, the bathroom feature, okay? So we have this feature called bathrooms and I want to see the unique values here and you can see that there are properties which has even like 13 bathrooms, okay? And I'm just naturally curious, like in Bangalore, you have these homes which with greater than like 10 bathrooms. And some of these are kind of okay. So see if you have 12,000 square foot home, which is pretty big, then having 10 bedroom, then having 12 bathroom is okay, all right? So then I again go to my business manager and I ask him, is there a criteria you have to remove the bathroom specific outliers? Uh, basically, he will tell you that anytime you have number of bathrooms which are greater than number of bedroom hall kitchen. Usually when you have two bedroom apartment, you have two uh, bathrooms. You can, sometimes you can have even three, but you can it is very unusual to have like four so let's say you have two bedroom apartment and you have four bathroom that is kind of unusual right so then after a discussion with your business manager you decide that anytime you have number of bathrooms greater than uh, your bedrooms plus two you're going to remove those as an outlier okay so before we do that let's uh, plot a histogram here again so histogram you can plot by calling plt.hist and r width is the width of the bar okay so when you run it you see the most of the properties are in two properties are having two bed two bathrooms and then four six etc and there are few outliers you know you see here which has more number of bathrooms okay so here now let's go back to our original criteria that our business manager told us, which is um, anytime you have bathroom greater than number of bedrooms plus two, you can mark them as an outlier. So after I come back from a meeting with business manager, I will run this criteria on my data set and see what's going on. So here I see that I have this four bedroom property having seven bathrooms. Another one is three bedroom property having six bathrooms. So all of these are outliers, which I can safely remove. So I'm going to remove them by running this. And now I get a new data frame. I still have around 7,000 uh, data points in that. Now my data frame looks pretty much neat and clean. So I can now start preparing it for uh, machine learning training. And for that, I have to drop some unnecessary features. So the price per square foot and the size feature at this point are unnecessary because for size, we already have BHK feature. So this one can be dropped. Price per square foot can also be dropped because this we used just for outlier detection, right? It did not have any other use. So I will create a new data frame where I will drop these two features and my new data frame looks something like this. All right, that's all I had for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to uh, create a machine learning model and we'll train it. We'll use grid search CV to come up with the best model.